beautiful. Hey, hey, everybody, train wreck. Hey, train wreck, it was train wreck. I see it, big old train wreck. Killebrew can't read yet? Can you? Well, Mary, when a man gets to reading, he gets to thinking. He gets to thinking, he gets in a whole lot of trouble. What are you hiding under that cloth, sis? A blueberry pie, and I'm not hiding it. I kind of thought we'd cut that up around bedtime. There's three more in the oven. You can have a whole one apiece. And one for John Killebrew, no doubt. Any objections? No, but still in all... Still in all what? Well, you know, Mary, the whole town knows. I'm asking him. Well, Mary, if it wasn't for crazy John Killebrew, we wouldn't be here. And this town wouldn't be here, which it oughtn't to be in the first place. <laughs> As you well know, we followed him out here because he said the railroad was coming after him. Well, here we sit. And the railroad is 22 miles to the north. <laughs> in a country as big as this, 22 miles is a very close miss. Ah, close only counts in horseshoes, sis. See what I mean? Hold this. He 
Even in horseshoes, close isn't always good enough. Sassy, ain't you? And something else. When a woman starts carrying pies to a man, things is going on. Ah, don't mean nothing, Angus. Killer was like another brother. You want him for your brother? Well, not exactly. Well, that's what you're gonna get. She's young, she's pretty, and she can cook. Now, you add a man to that, and things is gonna happen. Without even knocking, see what I mean? Why, that killer was an animal. Did I tell you I saw him talking to a bear? A bear? Up in Smart Valley, him and the bear sitting on a log talking just like us. I seen him. I believe that. Did you ever see Crazy John Killabrew go fishing? He don't fish with no hook and line like an ordinary man. He reaches down in the water and he catches some with his bare hands. No. Yeah. Don't matter what's said about John Killabrew. He's still a lot of man. What a wife you're gonna make for somebody. Who? Anybody. I heard what happened between you and Mr. Bass. Nothing happened. I just gave him a mug of beer. Mm, yes, I know. Was that wise? I mean, after all, Mr. Bass is a pretty important man in town. I ain't gonna worry about Sam Bat. I ain't got no money. And I'm too big for him to whip. <laughs> Shall we start our lesson? Yeah. How am I doing, anyhow? Oh, you're doing fine. I hope so. It's been damn near a year. It's been what? One of the purposes of reading is to acquire vocabulary and lessen the need for profanity. Profanity is merely a stupid person's way of emphasizing a statement, and I think you're past that stage now. I know, no, Mary. It's just this damn town. John, you mustn't blame everything on the town. I don't. They blame it on me. Maybe they got a right out. They believed in me, Mary. They followed me here. I grew up in this country with the Indians. I, I knew it like the palm of my hand. I thought I knew exactly where that railroad was going to come. That was ten years ago, John. Why can't you forget it? I told you. I can. They can't. Oh, well, that's all your imagination, John. Just like that engine Ray thinks he saw. You shouldn't be so bitter. Well, if that's the way I am, then so be it. If you like that, why don't you leave here? I plan to. Oh? So? But first, I'm going to show this town something. What? I don't know. Where'd you go? Hmm? San Francisco. Maybe the Yukon. Maybe just sail around the world. I don't know. Would you go alone? I reckon so. I always have. Tonight you're going to read Emerson, the essay on self-reliance. Something for lonely men. It is only as a man puts off from him, from himself all ex puts off from himself all ex. You want to read first? All right, I'll read it once, then you do it. It is only as a man puts off from himself all external support and stands alone that I see him to be strong and to prevail. He is weaker by every recruit to his banner. He's not a man better than a town. Read that again. No, you read it now. Please, Mary. Again, slow. It is only as a man puts off from himself all external support and stands alone that I see him to be strong and to prevail. He is weaker by every recruit to his banner. Is not a man better than a town. What are you doing? 
pick up business. John Killebrew, come back here and finish your lesson. Do you mind telling me where you're going? I know you've lost your reason, but have you lost your voice, too? Ain't that. Isn't, if you don't mind. I don't mind. I'll have to tell you all about it when I get back, Mary. If I'm here. Oh, you'll be here. Where are you gonna go? John Killebrew, have you gone stark staring mad? Well, let's tell you about that, too, Mary. Well, you needn't bother. And furthermore, you're wrong about the town, and they're right about you. You sure about that? Mary, didn't you just read me out of that book that a man is better than a town? Over a thousand pages, and I had to pick that one. San Francisco! If you get off the track, I am! Well, you got yourself another piece of baggage. Mary, this meat is 
burnt clean through. What is it now? Da 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 do 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 do. There's something going on around here. Well, I see you're all enjoying your last supper. I hear you right, Mary. You did. I'm leaving. Do what? Yep. And from now on, you can cook your own meals, wash your own dirty dishes, and make your own bed. Mary Dern, where are you going with that nighty? To John kill a bruise, and I won't be back till I'm married. Married? You sick, Angus. Mary, I'm your eldest brother, and I won't talk to you now like I was her daddy. You ain't traipsing off over there no nighty over your arm just to get married, especially to that crazy John Killebrew. Then what does that make me? Well, go on, tell me. Well, I'll tell you. I admire him, I believe in him, and I'm going to marry him. And I'm leaving this house right now. I don't think we got much to worry about. Huh? Killebrew's got to ask her first. Well, that pink knight will sure help him make up his mind. Well, let's go and get her. Oh, it ain't gonna make no difference. It ain't gonna hit none. What do you mean? Well, Killebrew ain't home. <laughs> well, what if he comes back in the middle of the night? Well, I guess we'll have to run ships and sit out on the front porch and watch. We can do that, can't we? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Boys, it ain't so much what's going on over there that's worrisome. It's what's going to happen over here. How's that, Angus? Breakfast. What are we going to do about breakfast? insurance company is, but I could sure show you the Golden Gate. I'm sure you could. Well? No, thanks. What a waste. Sir, this is an insurance company. Yeah. Uh, are you in charge here? Uh, dear me, no. Uh, Mr. Hofferkamp is the president. I'm his secretary. Yeah, well, tell him I want to talk to him, will you? I'm afraid that's impossible. He's tied up now. Well, supposing you untie him, because I got some business with him. I'll see what I can do. Yeah. With it. Uh, there's a Mr. Killebrew outside, sir. Killebrew? Never heard of him. What does he want? He wants to buy a machine. Throw him out. I don't think I can, sir. Well, I can. Would you come in, please? Mr. 
Mr. Killy Brew, or what can I do for you? I want to buy a steam engine from you. What would we be doing with a steam engine? I don't know, but you got one. We have? Yep. It's at the bottom of a fishing hole up at Immigrant Pass. It's a single piston, steeple rod paddle engine, serial number 1187. Oh, that. Yes, I suppose we do own that now. That's what the folks over the railroad told me. And you want to buy it? The price is right. Mr. Killybrew, I'm a businessman, but not thief. We've been informed that that engine is absolutely unsalvageable. Not only has it been deemed technically unfeasible, but the Sierra Railroad positively refuses to stop a train in that area without an escort of United States cavalry. Yeah, what's it worth? It costs $10,000, and it's worth nothing. Take a dollar for it? Forgive me for asking, but are you crazy? Well, opinions sort of divided on that. Mr. Killybrew, assuming that you were able to recover the steam engine, what would you do with it? I got plans. I see. Let's say you performed this miracle. Would you be interested in selling it? Hadn't thought about it. Think about it. What would you pay? In good condition. Accessible to us, $1,500. How about 3000 That's quite a sum of money. For a miracle? <laughs> If you will marry me, if you will marry me. Get the rifle. We're four with three against one, ain't we? That's what I mean. Go get it. I'm worried when your horse came home without you. I didn't meet him where I've been. Oh? You know, Mary, I must be getting old. I'm plumb tuckered out and I only walk 22 miles. <laughs> That's a good long walk. From where? Railroad tracks up at Emigrant Pass. Oh? I took myself a little trip to the city. Junction City? San Francisco. San Francisco? But what on earth is... Now, Mary, why don't you just sit down and I'll tell you all about it. Open up, Mr. John Killebrew. Well, they won't. I think they're after me. For what? Uh, I spent the night here. Well, they, they know I wasn't here, don't they? I don't know. Or care. That ain't necessary, Angus. It's open. We come to fetch your home where she belongs. Not till I show you something. Sit down. Huh? Sit down. We can stand. Take a look at that. Bill of sale. 
thought you'd be surprised. Well, you bought a steam engine? For a fact. Where is it? Up the line a piece. You mean that one that Rafe Runkle's been a-babbling on about? The same. I went into San Francisco and made a deal for it with Hofferkamp himself. R.J. Hofferkamp, the head man at the insurance company. That's his signature on that bill of sales, which you couldn't read, Angus. Well, then you really own it. That's right. And I'm willing to share it with any man that'll help me. And I want to give you Durin's a first chance. Help you what? Bring it into town, that's all. That's all? <laughs> Where is it now? Why, it's up at Immigrant Pass. And what's it doing there? Why, it's a line at the bottom of Rock Canyon Poo. <laughs> <laughs> There, just like Rafe saw it. All I need is a few men to help me, and I can bring her into town. Out of that water hole. It can be done. Drag it 22 miles back to town? Over the mountains? Look, I admit it ain't going to be easy, but it could be profitable. It's going to be worth a lot of money. You buy it, John? I got the bill of sale right there. Did it occur to you why you got it for a dollar? They told me. What'd they tell you, John? Afraid of a little Indian trouble. <laughs> yeah, like maybe getting tomahawked to death. <laughs> I thought I'd let him tell it. Well, you know how them city fellers are. They figure all Indians are just a bunch of screaming savages that you can't do business with. Which, of course, they ain't. Well, no, not necessarily. You fellas ought to know that. You came here alone, built this town. Yeah, with an axe in one hand and a rifle in the other. Nevertheless, you built it. And what do we got? All I'm trying to... Once before, we followed you, Killebrew. And once was enough. Where are you going, John? Why, he's going fishing for a steam engine. <laughs> what are you going to use for bait? <laughs> <laughs> One of these days, he ain't going to walk away. Uh, <laughs> old man. You loan me three good mules, and I'll bring that engine back here myself. I ain't got but three mules, John. You bet a dollar, you ask me to bet all I got. It's not that I mind. 20, 30 years ago, I'd have gone with you. I'll split it right down the line with you, 50-50. Wish I could. You're a man in a town full of women, John. You had nerve enough to come here and gamble on them railroad tracks. They followed you like women. They didn't come out here to cut a life out of this country. They come out here to get lucky and rich. You was wrong in your calculations. They think it was you that busted their dreams. Like women, they ain't gonna take the blame. All I got left is them mules. They're gonna carry me to my grave. They're gonna be my pallbearers, John. They're worth every bit of a hundred dollars. You want them, you can have them for fifty. I ain't got it. Well, I only know one place you can get it. Who want to borrow fifty dollars? Well, now, let's see here. Yeah, Killebrew, Killebrew. Yeah, there it is. Killebrew, you owe exactly $316.82. Including interest, and you are three payments in arrears. And you have the gall to try to borrow 50 more? I need those mules bad, Sam, and I ain't got a nickel. Well, all right, here's a nickel, Killeroo. You just go buy yourself a beer, and this time throw it in your own face. <laughs> If you was to call a cow of a thicket, how'd you do it? <laughs> if you was call a steam engine out of the water, how'd you do that? You're right, you are crazy. 
the bottle. Charge it. Anything you say, John. Mighty fine supper we had tonight, Mary. Wasn't it a good supper, Pete? Best eating since you took over for Ma, Mary. <coughs> you hear about Kilbrew? He's down at the saloon, drinking it up just like they're gonna quit making it. Kilbrew cutting up some, is he? My, my. Well, he's had a bad old man Walensky turns him down on them mules. Then he's got the guts to go to Sam Bat for $50. <laughs> I never see the grown man go downhill so fast. Standing there at the bar since sundown, just swilling it back. Oh, amazing he's still standing. Just barely, I'd say. <laughs> And lucky for you, you seen it in time. Town nut to the town drunk. <laughs> Why don't you just shut up? What did I say that ain't a fact? You never tell a woman a fact, even. Maybe I better talk to her. Just sit down. It ain't easy for a woman to get over something like this. Now, she'll go inside and have herself a little cry. As women will do, and by tomorrow morning, she'll be her old self again. Now, why is she going to town? She's going shopping. That night? Oh, let her walk it off, boy. She's just trying to get John Killebrew out of her system.
<laughs> now, you let this happen just because of some mules? No. No, it wasn't just the mule. It was everything. Everybody in town thinks I'm crazy. I can put up with that, but when you said I was crazy, Those mules? They're hanging to the clothesline. Mary. How'd you get them? I bought them. Fifty dollars? Where'd you get the money? My dowry. Mary, I'll get that steam engine. I'll show this town. I'll take those mules and, and I'll go tonight. And you'll take me. Mary, that ain't no place for a woman. Anywhere her man is, that's a woman's place. down there, John? Well, sure, I'm sure. Who could have moved it? Well, that's what I'm wondering, too. John? Yeah? John, you know I wouldn't be here if I didn't have a lot of faith in you. Yeah, I know that, Mary. Yeah, well, I just don't believe it. What? Well, I just don't believe you can drag a steam engine out of that pool. Well, I don't either. The way I figured, if you can't drag a steam engine out of the pool, you just move the pool away from the steam engine. You just move the pool? Sure. Mary, you know what they used to call me when I lived with the Indians? Big Beaver. All right, Big Beaver. How do you move a pool? You train it. Just step back, Mary. Just step back. <laughs> these rocks any smaller? Mary, honey, I, I don't make them. I just dig them. Leave them more big ones for me. Can we 
do it, John. Can we really do it? Of course we can do it. Just the two of us. You and me together. You and I. That's right. You and me. got cash for you. John Killebrew, you've really done it. Yep. Today we drain the pool. I don't mean the pool. Then what? That you've been sleeping with me these past few nights. Mary, I can leave a hand on you and you know it. Why would I know? I'm so tired every day I sleep like a log. Well, you can take my word for it. Well, I do, John. But will the rest of the town? I better fix our breakfast, John. Listen to me. Hmm? I, I give you my solemn word. Well, that isn't your word that matters anymore. Oh, I see. It's them three loudmouth brothers of yours, huh? 
Out of my hands. Well, it's in mine, and I can whoop all three of them. They know that, John. They'll have guns. Mary. I don't need no gun to make me marry you. take John to be your lawful wedded husband? I most certainly do. And do you, John, take Mary to be your lawful wedded wife? Since he's going to be one of the family, I'm going to speak for him. He do. A man maybe gets married one time in his lifetime, and when he takes that vow, he don't want no gun in his back. Now, state that question again. Uh, do you, John, take Mary to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. I now pronounce you man and wife. Is that it? I'm through. I'm not. think that one of these days he's going to settle or settle down in the mount to something. You know what they say, what they all say. What's that, Ethan? A wedlock's a padlock. <laughs> Ethan. <laughs> Ethan. Oh. He's one of us now. That's right. And he might even share our chores with us. Yep. He might even share our meals with us. And by the devil's forked tail, I think that he ought to be over here sharing our whiskey with us right now. That's a good idea. Pete, you go over there and see if that light's are still burning. Still burning. And we're going to go over and show some brotherhood and invite them over. 
maybe Mary will fix us a little snack. <laughs> That's a good idea, Eben. That's a good idea. That ain't the door. I think that they heard that. I'll knock. Nobody's home. That ain't all. His horse is gone. I never should have gone back to town. You mean to get married? Oh, Mary. A man could get married any day. But how many times in his life does he get a chance to find a steam engine? John Killebrew, are you sure? Are you really sure it was ever there? You were here when I drained this pool. No, I wasn't. I was at the camp taking a bath. Oh, Trust I me. see. It never was here in the first place, right? I'm just seeing things. Is that it? All right, I'll tell you what. You get on that horse and I'll show you where that steam engine went.
Washington é o disco. Nem o avar, nem o gista. Eu a conheço. Eu a conheço. John, John, there's something I don't understand. What's that? How are we going to get this steam engine back to town? Back to town. We'll wheel it. I'm a blacksmith. Is for supper. <laughs> you mean you caught him without a fishing line? Why, sure. Just reached in there and got him while I was asleep. Oh, they're beautiful. You mean they were sleeping together? Yep. Just like husband and wife. Just like us, Mary. Not quite like us. Is not a man better than a town. You bet he is. John? John? Sick out here, and I wouldn't get that engine back. I'll, I'll go get you an extra blanket. But I don't want another blanket. If it ain't no difference, I'll get it. No problem. But Mrs. John Killebrew shouldn't need. Like I said, no problem. No problem.
many people carrying their own stoves with them, now are there, Mary? I reckon we're sort of lucky to find all this dry kindling, huh? It just ain't right to make a beast of burden out of anything so lovely. Are you talking about me or the steam engine? Oh, Mary, I... Ain't a he, and I think I know her. Now you get around behind the steam engine. Don't get scared and make any foolish move. Just stay right there. Howdy, ma'am. I see you again. Hey, that's a mighty cute little cub you got there. Yes, sir. He he's a dandy. children. Sure we're going to have children. Lots of them. Mary, you know what that steam engine means? It means our kids are going to have to grow up in a little ignorant mountain town. It means they can have an education like you and, and see the big cities of the world and grow up and be something better than me. You know what I mean? Oh. You don't? I mean, I can't imagine anybody being better than you. Going, we could make five miles today. Don't you ever get tired? <sighs> I'm tired.
You know, Mary, this trip learned me something I always wondered about. Taught. Taught. What? It taught me why men want to go over mountains, push out to sea, and go over Niagara Falls in a barrel. You know what I mean? Yep. You do? for their home. We've done it? <gasps> oh, we've really done it? Well, not quite. We've still got to cross Meta Creek. After all this rain, that ground's liable to be a little soft.
Do you believe that? That's ridiculous. Nah, it's impossible. Is it? Saddle me up. straightened out, they'll have to tip it over, and then we'd really be sick. Couldn't we go to town for help? We could, but we ain't. Well, is no. it? John? It looks like the town's coming out of here. gentlemen, that steam engine isn't so funny as this town thinks. Neither is John Killebrew. Everybody was laughing pretty hard, Sam. Bleak laughing at some poor boob is one thing, but when you keep on laughing, you're a boob yourself. Go on about that steam engine, Sam. Yeah. Well, to Killebrew, that engine is worth whatever he can sell it for. Maybe much as two, three thousand dollars. But to me, to the town that is, that engine could mean a fortune. That could bring prosperity by turning the wheels of industry. What industry? No, I'll tell you. All of you men have stands of timber around here. All right, what's it been used for? No, I'll tell you. It's to hunt rabbits in, to get firewood, and once a year cut down a Christmas tree. But those aren't just trees on that land, gentlemen. What are they, Sam? Well, I'll tell you. They're 
Bridges, furniture, houses, ships. And do you know what turns him into that? A sawmill. And do you know what operates a sawmill? A steam engine. I ask you gentlemen to imagine it. This town that missed being a railroad center now rising to a lumber metropolis in the wilderness. Industry, growth, riches. That should be its destiny and our fortune. And do you know where our fortune lies? It's stuck in the mud out there two miles from here. So I say instead of uh, laughing at Killebrew, we should have pitched in to help him. Some of the people offered to, Sam. Sure, us germs, we tried. And what did he say? Well, same thing. He said he don't need nobody. He's going to do it all himself. Who could rightly blame him? We did him an injustice, all of us. We had a great man in our midst, and we didn't realize it. Uh, it's a matter of history. The injustice of mankind. Therefore, I say to make amends. We show him exactly the kind of men that we really are and how we really feel. How do we feel, Sam? He wants to sell that engine. Well, we buy it from him. We'll meet his price. We'll go out there first thing in the morning and we'll put it to him fair and square. What if he ain't willing to sell, Sam? I ne we need that engine, Angus. We'll sell one way or the other. You got the other way, Sam? Right here, Angus. John Killebrew, $316.82. Three payments in arrears. A little toast, gentlemen, to the brawn of John Killebrew and the brains of Sam Bass. Uh, I'll drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> John, we come to help. Now, we've been a setting up all night of thinking, and we figure we owe you an apology. So that's why we came out here early like this, to apologize. Now, we ought to have been helping you out with that engine from the beginning. And so you may as well accept our offer, John, because it's all the family now. Let me set you boys straight. First of all, that engine ain't in the family, it's in the mud. And it's mine. And I'll get it out of here by myself. Hey! Hey, Big John! They're coming after it, Big John! They're going to take it away from you! They're going to get it from you, Big John! I hear him, Ray. Can I help you, Big John? No, no. You just stay out of the way. I think I owe you an apology. And I think I speak for every man in this town. I don't see any. I know how you must feel. I can't say I blame you. But I also realize that words have little meaning. So I didn't bring just conversation here. I brought along something that you would understand. Money. Killebrew, I'll buy that engine for any price you name. Right here, right now. You just name it. Sam, if I could trade you a dead horse for the Union Pacific Railroad, I'd rather walk to St. Louis on my bare feet. <laughs> I don't think you heard rightly. This is United States currency I'm holding here. You just give the word, and I'll start failing. Put your money in your pocket, Sam. I ain't selling that engine to you or nobody else and I never had any intention to. All right. I tried to be fair. 
Go ahead, Sheriff. John, I got to serve you with this here paper. It's the law. I take it. Go ahead, John. Please now, John, it's the law. Now, this ain't my doing, but the law is the law, and I got the badge. You owe him money legally, he can take that engine. Let him try. Tell him, bro, I made you a fair and square offer, and these good people here heard me. So if you don't want to do business with me, you've got to do business with the sheriff. It's the law, John. Is it? Is that the law, Sheriff? When a man refuses to sell something that is really his, you can, you can bring out a piece of paper and take it away from him? Well, John owes him money, Mary. An honest debt which he'll pay, and you know it. Anyway, Sam Bat doesn't care about the money he's owed. He just wants that machine. And all you're doing is helping him steal it by telling everybody it's the law. Well, you heard her, Sheriff. It's going to take more than a little piece of paper to take that in. Or me. All right, man. Take it. You? Well, you ain't me. That's what I meant. Oh. Aren't you going to do something, Sheriff? Well, not until he finish, I ain't. Stop! Think he's nothing? He said he won't do it himself. Oh, Angus, come on, it's four against one. That order be about even. Of course, we could help a little. I got to take you in, Kelly Brew. It's the law. You destroyed a legal paper, caused a public riot with assault and some battery. It's against the law to beat up a man, let alone four. What about five? It's the same thing, John. Good. <laughs> you ready, John? I am now. Don't you dare leave any of you. Now, you listen to me. You too, Mr. Bat. For ten years, you've been humiliating that man. You've mocked him and cursed him behind his back. You're afraid to say it to his face. And now, gutless as always, you let the sheriff take him off to jail. You want us to interfere with the law? No. I want you to understand what is really happening here. This machine that none of you cared about or even wanted, this steam engine. It's John Killebrew's payment for that mistake he made ten years ago. You see, he knew that, that this steam engine could be the beginning of this town, a future for all of us. So now you have a choice. You can let Sam back keep the engine and go on running you and this town, or you can follow John Killebrew like you did once before. Now, which is it? You got so many charges against you, John, I'm gonna have to write them down. Tearing up a legal paper, causing a public disturbance, four men flattened, uh, how much was that debt you owe, John? Three hundred and sixteen dollars and eighty-two cents. Sheriff! 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 Hey, Sheriff! Watch it, Rafe. They're coming, Sheriff. They're coming. Who's coming? The women. The women? Yeah, they're they're all coming, and one of them's carrying a rope. My goodness, they're coming for you, John. It comes for me. The women. They're coming to lynch you, man. Don't you want to know? I ain't never lost a prisoner yet. We'll sneak out the back way and ride to Jefferson City. Rafe, you take them horses around the back. They'll never lynch John Killebrew as long as I'm sheriff. Sheriff, 
Women don't want to lynch John. What? They want to lynch you. Me? My goodness. Tell him you got to get out of there. They ain't coming for you. They're coming for me. What are you letting me out for? Stop protecting man. Get out there now. and I'll prove it to you. place out there for our left. Oh, I guess the good people of Arcana just had a large dose of plain truth. Charge these to my brother-in-law. He's rich. <laughs> Steve, what a day for our kill. And all because of you, Mary Jerry. What did you say? I said all because of you. Well, that's what it is. That's the way it's going to be. Mary Kilburn. Don't you forget. Well, now, I don't think I'll have a lot of trouble remembering that. 